kick-ass facts. I'm about to ruin your childhood. Ba -bee 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 -bee! Ba ba black sheep. There are two theories about this one. There are multiple theories about all of them. Let's just get that out of the way. First, the rhyme is about a medieval wool tax implemented under King Edward I in 1275, whereby he received one third of profits per sack. Thus, having three bags of wool meant one was for the king. Additionally, black sheep wool was less lucrative because it couldn't be dyed and therefore fetched a lower price. The second theory is that it is connected to the slave trade of the southern United States. Rub-a-dub-dub. The American version, rub-a-dub-dub, three men in the tub, and who do you think they be? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, all put out to sea, is a warped version of the original, which goes, hey rub-a-dub, ho rub-a-dub, three maids in a tub, and who do you think were there? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, all of them going to the fair. If it was the maid in the tub, this reference is either a really old school peep show where men would pay to see women in a tub, or the butcher, baker, and candlestick maker were spying on women bathing in the tub without their consent. Jack and Jill. Again, two theories. Originally, it was Jack and Gill. Theory number one. This told the story of King Charles I and his attempt to implement a liquid tax reform. Apparently, Jack's and Gill's were units of measurement. After Parliament rejected the tax, Charles reduced the volume of these measurements because he was a petty bitch. The other theory is that the poem is about a young couple who used to sneak up the hill to do more than just fetch a little water. Eh? Eh? Ding. After a boulder dislodged and killed Jack, Gil died in childbirth, and Gil's son was raised by the villagers. Apparently, Gilson remains a popular surname in the area. I don't know what area. Don't ask me questions. I will not be entertaining questions at this time. Thank you. London Bridge is Falling Down has multiple theories. The most likely explanation is that Vikings sang it in 1014 when they attacked the bridge. Allegedly, Vikings sang variations of this song during many of their conquests. I wonder if they would have, like, breakout sessions. Like, you two go off and come up with new lyrics for tomorrow putting some music to their raping and pillaging. Other sources suggest that the bridge is protected by a fair lady who was a child sacrifice. Some believe that many children were walled into the bridge and left to die. And another theory comes from an old belief that a bridge would collapse without a human sacrifice buried within its foundation. So the man to watch all night is the spirit of the dead human being watching over the bridge. Ring around the rosy, obviously, about the Great Plague of 1665. It manifested as a smelly red-ringed rash. To hide the smell, infected people often carried flowers. Since people also believed that the disease spread through bad smells, many people carried flowers to cover their faces whenever they went out, hence a pocket full of posies. Finally, Ashes, Ashes, We All Fall Down is about burning the many dead bodies, an estimated 15% of London's population. I remember being at school and we would hold hands and walk in a circle singing this song, and then when it was Ashes, Ashes, We All Fall Down, we would drop to the floor and we would laugh and laugh about thousands and thousands of burning bodies. Rockabye Baby. Historians believe this nursery rhyme is about King James II of England who had trouble producing an heir, so he smuggled another man's baby into the birthing chamber during his wife's pregnancy so he could claim a Catholic heir and install an absolute monarchy. The wind that knocks the baby's cradle down, aka the House of Stuart, is the Protestant wind blowing from the Netherlands. Other sources suggest that this lullaby refers to a 17th century ritual where stillborn babies were hung from trees in an attempt to bring them back to life. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Surprise, it's uh, racism. It was originally about catching enslaved people. The part of the rhyme that I remember as being catch a tiger by its toe was not originally tiger. And it's not the only nursery rhyme that used the N-word. Ten Little Monkeys and Do Your Ears Hang Low were minstrel show staples that were used to mock black people. The same applies to Jimmy Crackhorn, Camp Town Races, and Oh Susanna. Bugs Bunny. We used to use Camp Town Races all the time.